The Cube at EMC World 2014 is brought to you by EMC. Redefine. VCE. Innovating the world's first converged infrastructure solution for private cloud computing. Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. And we're back. This is Stu Miniman, along with Steve Keniston, Wikibon.org, and we're with SiliconANGLE TV's live continuous coverage here in Las Vegas, digging into the, the, the whole ecosystem and a whole lot of solutions that go beyond storage. Uh, segments we're focusing on right now, we're talking about cloud, and our guest for this segment, uh, happy to have an end user on, always love the practitioners to be able to share with their peers, Tom Peitler, who's Director of IT from Caliber. Tom, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So, uh, First, can you level set a little bit for us? Tell us a little bit about who Caliber is and what's your role there. Sure, Caliber is a management consulting and technology services company. Uh, we're employee owned, and uh, we do a lot of things around logistics, veterans programs, uh, energy, uh, a lot of different uh, government services, and we're also in the private industry as well. Okay, and where are you located? How many locations? Uh, Alexandria, Virginia is our headquarters. Uh, we have 750 employees approximately, and we have uh, four other locations. Okay, and uh, director of IT, how, how big is the IT staff there? Uh, we have approximately 20 people on the IT staff today. Okay, and are they kind of siloed by uh, you know storage and different pieces, or how do you, you how know, do you work on it today? I own. Uh, I don't believe in doing that. I think that when when you have a storage engineer and a VMware engineer and a network engineer and you know, a security engineer, that you just have no cross training. There's no way for people to grow, no way for them to learn, and uh, that also, you know, if one person leaves, you have a, a problem on your hand. You're going to have to replace that storage person real quick and find someone who knows EMC or you know knows uh, Isilon or whatever. So um, I really believe in having a, a wide breadth and letting the you know systems engineers to take care of all of our servers, all our application stack, the, the storage environment, and then we have a network team that takes care of networking and security. Okay, so it, it, one of the challenges of that, of course, is did the cross-training and understanding more than one domain is a little difficult. How, how do you how do you handle that? You know, we uh, we have a pretty robust training uh, budget at Caliber. We believe in uh, in taking care of our people, and we we make sure that as time goes on, that uh, we get them to the right trainings. Uh, right now, I have one of my systems engineers with me here at EMC World, uh, so that he can learn more about what what he works on every day. Awesome. So, so it's, uh, yeah. you know, public gets to do some of the hands-on labs and everything like that. Exactly. Okay, so talk, yeah, let, let's get into it. Can you talk to can you paint a map for us a little bit about what is your infrastructure looks at? Would you consider what you have be is it a hybrid cloud and you know what, what, what makes it what what pieces do you have? Sure. So um, we're kind of unique from the perspective of we actually have two physically different infrastructures. Uh, one's our commercial infrastructure where we run all of our our corporate applications, our email, our SharePoint, um, you know file shares, all those different things. And then we actually have a different net circuit that's sponsored by the, by the Army, and we do services directly for the military through that circuit. Uh, so with those different things, we do have colo sites, and we do do a, a little bit of hybrid, but not in the traditional sense where you, know, you go to an Amazon Web Services or you're working with uh, you know, vCloud, something like that. We're actually working more with uh, some mill cloud providers that you know, most people haven't heard of uh, to provide you know, continuity of operations and disaster recovery services, those types of things. Okay, um, dealing with the government, obviously you have to worry about things like compliance and, and, and security, so you know, how, can you, can you, how did you get to that environment and uh, you know, just talk to us about kind of that process, that how did you get to the, these services sure, that you so, offer? So years ago, we actually established the, the Nippernet circuit through one of our projects, the integrated logistics application. And uh, when we did that, um, we had to go through a DIACAP, and, uh, or back then it was called DITSCAP, and we had to go through all the security controls that are, are put out by the military. Um, and then as time goes on, we have uh, regular reaccreditations. And so security is at the forefront. Uh, we're actually in the transitional period right now because the uh, military is moving away from DIACAP to uh, what they're calling RMF, and that's a lot more NIST-based and a lot more FISMA. Uh, so there's going to be a lot more controls involved. Uh, but as that has gone on, we've gone from you know, traditional firewalls to next generation firewalls. We have a lot of segmentation. 
Um, and and that that's really important to us that that we make sure that that the data is secure and that we uh, make sure that our soldiers are getting the data they need when they need it. Okay. Um, so you mentioned you use it VMware in your, your shop. Uh, my understanding you're using some vCloud, not the vCloud hybrid service, but, but vCloud. How, how long have you been using that? Can you tell us a little bit about your experience with it? Sure, we, uh, we started using VMware ESX back in version 3.5. Um, we've been with it since. Um, and we have used a number of other applications. Uh, thin, thin client, and uh, or thin app, I guess they called it, um, as well as uh, vCloud, uh, vCops, uh, for operations management yep. and uh, Cap IQ back when before BCOP. So we've gone through the, the whole breadth, and really we've gone from uh, I would say probably around 10 racks on our commercial side down to four, and we're probably 90% virtualized. And then on the military side, I would say we're also 90% virtualized, and we've been able to get some economies of scale and, and drive value into the business by doing that. Okay. Um. So, you know, if you look back to some of the early cloud discussions, one of the questions was, you know, what's the difference between, you know, I've used ESX and I'm virtualized, you know, how do I get to that cloud? It has to be kind of the orchestration and the automation. Sounds like you guys have gone through that process. Um, did you have kind of milestones you said? Did you have a goal to say, I, I want to be a cloud environment? You know, how, how did you get to the, that environment? Yeah, I think that, it, that we're still going through it. Yeah. Um, you know, I, if anybody says 100% cloud, I, I don't believe it. I, you know, I think that, that it's a transformational thing right now. Um, but we have gone through an, a number of processes and being that we do a lot of stuff with the military, um, it, it's a learning curve on both sides. You know, teaching them what we know about the cloud and making sure that from their perspective that the security aspects are being met and everything. Um, so we've been able to do some things. Uh, years ago with one of our programs, we had uh, a number of distributed locations and we would push the data all over the place. And uh, as time's going on, you know, we're looking at things like VPlex and, and, and other technologies, uh, recover point and things like that so that we can get the data out there cleaner and not have to necessarily rely on everybody getting the same data in sync and, and make sure that, that it's available. Okay. And what were some of the first steps you guys started to take as you were thinking about going down the road of like, you know, decision making process, not only, you know, what am I going to do for my business, but technically how is this going to help me kind of continue to deliver IT as a service per se? Sure. So, um, infrastructure came first. You know, we wanted to make sure that we had a robust network, robust storage environment, and ro robust compute, obviously. Um, and then on top of that, uh, we looked at how are we going to drive value into our customers. Um, being that technology services is part of Caliber, we are not the service provider. We're not an Amazon Web Services. Uh, we're not out there to go get that type of work. But what we do is we have a very solid capability in, internally, and we want to make sure that, that we can provide value to our customers. So when, when we're talking to them about bringing on a new application or a new service, not only can we write it for you, not only can we help you analyze the data, not only can we help you publish that data and visualize it and understand it, we can, we can also host it for you and bring you value through this infrastructure that we've created and that we have corporately paid for and that we can give you small chunks of it. And uh, through doing that, we've actually come in uh, cheaper than, some, than Amazon Web Services and other people because you know, we have an infrastructure that's very, very specific to a need and uh, it provides the results they need. So it's now it's almost like it is IT as a service. And so the next thing is, is as you've started to watch the business grow from when, okay, folks would just call you and you build it, maybe then build an application and they would host it probably years ago, whereas now you're, you have the ability to kind of go full gamut and help them host it. Have you seen the business kind of transform? Are you taking on more business? Is it getting out of control? Yeah, we're, we're trying. That's actually what we're trying to do right now. We are looking at a forward-facing IT group. Um, we're looking at leveraging what's become you know, a, a great capability of ours where we're, we have high you know, four, five, nines, and that, hey, we've, we've stumbled upon something. You know, we, we're doing this as an internal service and we got a good thing going, so let's, let's build it and let, let's look at these other technologies and, and grow it for the, yeah. for the business. So that's where we want to go. I don't think we want to be a hosting company per se, right. but we want to say, hey, look, we understand end-to-end -end application delivery and that we can help you get there. 
Yeah, so, so Tom, I'm curious, uh, you know, it doesn't sound like you guys are going out there saying, you know, we want to compete with Amazon. You're, you're focused on your customers, and, and therefore there, there might be services that it's possible they might go to Amazon, but you're either adding more value or your pricing's better, there, there's a whole lot of options that right. there. That, that'd be a fair statement? Yeah, it is, and it's because we understand the, you know, their business need and that we understand where they're trying to go. We have a lot of long, long-term customers, um, and we have uh, first principles that guide us, and among them are things like take care of our people, take care of our customers, um, and, and leverage technology. And so we really stand on those principles to, to grow the, the organization. Yeah. Um, so one of, one of the big talking points here at EMC has been that, that, that migration from kind of traditional applications to the more mobile application, kind of second platform to third platform, you sure. will. And I believe you guys span uh, you know, that offering uh, for, for your customers. You were talking about some, some of the data visualization and, and, and some of the, the new big data pieces. So how, how do you work with your customers and how do you span those, uh, those environments where the third platform is one that you know, Amazon seems to be pretty strong in? So sure. uh, how, how, do you, how do you span between those? You know, we're actually getting into the third platform now as you look at it, and there's two projects that come to mind. One that really focuses around big data, it's our meter data management system program. Uh, with that program, what we actually do is we've uh, put uh, meters out at many uh, army installations, and we're collecting in that data. We have tons of sensors. We're visualizing it, we're analyzing it. Uh, in the first few months of that program, we had one site that we realized that there was an air conditioning and the heating system fighting each other simultaneously. And uh, that within, you know, yeah, we got the service tickets put in and everything else, and uh, we got 60% of their utility costs lowered immediately. Um, so, you know, on that big data front, that's what we're looking at doing is, is, is okay, how can we put sensors out there? How can we figure out what's going on and, and, and solve problems that they might not even know that they have? Uh, and then from the, uh, the mobile and the third platform and, and really growing into that, uh, we've had a long-standing project that involves the logistics where we take a ton of data from um, supply data, management data, financial data, and we bring all that into one platform. And it's traditionally been a online-only type platform and we're moving it to a mobile application and so that we can bring uh, people into, um, it, you know, get the soldiers in the field the data so they don't have to go back to base and whatever else, they've got an iPhone and Android, they can securely access that data. All right, so, so Tom, they're trying to give us the hook, but I got to give you one last question sure. here. So you, you've, you've been working on this for a while, so from the virtualization through to the cloud. Uh, one of the challenges as an early adopter is you have to you know, fight through some of these things and you know, help things mature. So when you look at the, you know, the marketplace today, you know, what advice would you give to your peers? You know, what can they do better, faster than they could before? Uh, you know, or what, 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 what do you wish you could, do, could have, if you had had, you know, when you had started, uh, you know, that you could have taken advantage of? I almost of. wish, what did somebody have told you to, you didn't stumble on that. Sure, I think that uh, we, we didn't have this as a stumbling block, but I, for talking to my peers, I feel that their stumbling block a lot of time is, is the corporate support and, and the monetary side of it that you, know, you need to make an investment in these technologies in order for you to, to gain out of them. You know? So we have you know, uh, IR&D budgets and, and we bring in brand new technologies like VMAX and, and deduplication and, and all those different things as they're coming online and we already have Hadoop in, in our, our labs, we're looking at Neo4j. And so as time goes on, you know, we're, we're pushing the envelope, and that's what I recommend to everybody, is push the envelope. See what's coming, see what people are talking about, what's the hot topics, and stay on top of it and try your best. And you know, sometimes, sometimes budgets get in the way, maybe you can use a smaller section of your environment uh, to do it, but that way you have some type of knowledge so that when you're talking to your customers, you really understand their problems, and then in turn, you can uh, bring in a brand new technology solution that nobody else has done and really innovate. All right, hey, Tom, I really appreciate you sharing you know, your embrace of uh, you know, the new technologies that are out there. I'm sure all the practitioners out there are going to learn a lot from uh, what you have to say, and thanks for sharing the story of Caliber. Uh, we will be right back uh, with our next guest in our you know, broad coverage from EMC World.